Vega. What was it this time? Uh, the error code seems to say it was something to do with the fuel weight, except it hasn't changed since last time, so... Uh... So, is the program is faulty, yes? It can't be. It only simulates what we tell it to anyway. Then maybe we are the ones that don't. Error number 334, hack variation 5. Craft weight exceeds the limitations that make fuel available. Increase fuel capacity or reduce craft mass. Well, that is variation. It simply measures the crew's chances of survival. Now to the reference in this instance as zero. <laughs> we will worry about the mitigating loss when we can get a craft into space, I think. In the most walk before they can fall. How do we achieve data then? Pattern where, well, if I am mistaken, but have we not to achieve optimal craft mass already? Ugh, I have a sudden feeling we are traveling in the wrong direction. We changed the fuel amount, didn't we? Which then in turn changed the required size of the storage tanks, which then doubled the total ship mass. We changed, we forgot how much the equation were actually changing. We cannot go farther with this garden iron metal we are working with. It is too heavy, it weighs down too much. And what do you propose we use instead? Alloys? Finer metals? Something not peeled off the scrap of my people's tanks and beaten down? You are right. We could only do with what we are given. As you said, it happens to be secondary materials. Ugh. To achieve a task impossible enough already. In Deutschland, <coughs> all of our science were treated with respect and given the workspace and materials we needed. Back then, I was striving for a man's dream. It's twisted, so it may have been. Instead of slaving for some child's dream. Here, we must cobble together tin cans built from Deutsch greatness and pray it does not fall from the sky like a dead bird. Kaput. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me for not lamenting the war quite. So fondly far. I do not regret its end, Bernard, but you must admit that we had a greater sense of purpose than. We still find ourselves a purpose, don't we? Even as it's <coughs> quite uh, as important as it once was. <laughs> The two of you are even the three of us can build a flight where you rock this boy. Does the Russians believe? As do your American friends, why should not we? Is that an actual question or a rhetorical one? <laughs> the, the Russians and Americans have money to need. And, <laughs> and scientists, real scientists, with the resources they need. We have us three, the country as size of a small town. And a boy duke's only over our heads trying to make our dead father's dream around to his dead father's dream. I look better in small groups. People are noisy. Uh, you think too much about the impossibility of things, Collins. It will involve a scientist and money. They're just as crazy as our duke. They have a sort of words with this venture in France. Bricolaire. Uh, it means something without really knowing exactly what it is the whole time. Ugh, it sounds contradictory, but the thing about science, you have to have faith in what you are doing. And then you conquer space and make famous. It is the way of things. Make famous? I could do with that. Can that be all? Oh. Now I believe I will call the end to this failure. I believe I will try this to the great buoyant that is the corridor. Outside, and sleep. Well, I must prepare myself for the abomination the Duke calls breakfast. <laughs> Rest sounds good. I will join you. Collins? Uh, I shall stay here and try to fix the fuel algorithm. That way at least we'll be back where we started tomorrow. Uh, suit yourself, Collins. Uh, try not to keep us awake with all your typing. I dare say we're here from across the hole. Good night. It is important, therefore, that we take note of these exterior influences and ensure they do not negatively impact our own lifestyles. While although Trinoska may be small, we are still a proud nation 
unique amongst our neighbours as our Duke Premier stated in his autumn address. Dearest Catherine, dear Catherine, I hate to start with apologies, but I'm sorry for leaving it so long between letters. We've been getting so trapped in dancing around our most glorious boy Duke that I don't know for precious enough time to sleep, let alone formulate words suitable enough for your reading. But enough of excuses. I love you regardless, even if I scarcely have time to write it. Our work as ever progresses slowly, and in a generally upwards direction. I've not really left my own devices long enough to form any concrete doubts, but our task is becoming all the more daunting each day. My colleagues don't appear to share these sentiments of mine for better or worse. Not that it really matters, I dare suppose, with the Duke's enthusiasm at our backs. It's motivation of sorts. I stumbled into the office of the Regents Linguistic Department the other day, in what used to be the second floor parlour. The whole room gusted out overnight, Cathy, to make room for yet another of the Duke's projects. And what a project, too! Three poor individuals tasked with creating a whole new language for Jovnoska, whatever such a task entails. With any luck, they'll at least develop a better departmental naming system for the good Duke. As much as I do not relish the thought of adopting a whole new language, it must be better than this unified English we're chained to now. Sure, I have it easy, you would think, but not when your colleagues were birthed to another tongue. The Americans were not so bad, of course, but having half of what you say met with contorted looks is trying, to say the least. It almost seems a waste to new to them, so why? Bernard epitomized the project earlier in French. Bricoleur, he said, to create something without ever actually quite knowing how. Language is a strange thing. Anyway, but uh, enough of my misadventures, Cathy. I hope you're well at home and that the inevitable flood of proposals that followed my absence haven't done nothing to dampen your love for me. I regret leaving you, but do not doubt for a second that as soon as this project dissolves, be it through some miraculous success or more likely the ire of the Duke, I'll be away from this godforsaken speck of the country and back in your arms forever, my dear. Till then, and with all my love, your dearest James. P.S. I'm still unsure whether the Postal Division censors these letters like they used to at the branch, so if it's mainly black bars, imagine they're concealing marvellous compliments or such like. <laughs> at least that way you'll think better of me. Conquer space. Make famous. I prefer wartime, to be honest. What is, what is Drobnoska without its great leader? Ushered gracefully into dukedom just some few months ago, Christoph the Younger has already upheld in every way the legacy of his father. Jobnoska's first regent duke, Christoph the I, wise far beyond his years. Duke Christoph the Younger has been instrumental in the formation and access of the regent's skyward travel department. The team of dedicated scientists striving as we speak to further our country on the international field. To say his focus is single-minded would be erroneous however as Christoph has also succeeded in building upon the strong bases of infrastructure introduced by his father before him. Even the arts have been offered the ability to flourish under the Duke Premier's kind leadership, as my guest will be able to tell us now. Good morning, Duke Premier, and of course your usual breakfast as requested, as well as a copy of today's itinerary for you to study. Would the Duke care to hear of the day's events as he breaks his fast? Oh, good morning, Henry. Yes, I suppose I must. Are there any pressing matters at hand? Well, 
Jobnowski's maths pressing dual premiere, why Jobnowski did not become the glorious state it is today without the constant guidance of its most I dare say, Henrik, this egg is hard boiled. Oh, I must apologize, dual premiere. Clearly, clearly, our cooks are slacking again due to the strain of our guests. But this is unacceptable. I will make sure they are Think punished. nothing of it, Henrik. I will simply soldier through. <laughs> Even dukes must leave their bread undipped, I fear. What of the morning news? Ah, yes, true, Premier. <coughs> the sun broke to a gentle easterly wind, which I have on good promise will usher in a sunny afternoon with a slight chance of wind. Good, good. <laughs> While optimum for the Duke Premier's scheduled fishing trip with the region's publicity officer, such temperatures are likely to lead to inflammation of the Duke's seasonal fever. Mm -hmm. Of course, I have taken the liberty of picking up your usual medicine from the Regent's physician, as well as commissioned a line of fashionable handkerchiefs from the Duke's own seamstress. Excellent, Henrik! Uh, um. I was just beginning to feel it in my sinus already, that mugginess mother always hated. How would the Regent's manage without you? Developments. What about the project, Henry? <coughs> it is fortuitous you should ask, Duke Premier. Our guests, in fact, desire a meeting with you this very morning. I, I believe they have a few questions regarding the project. They wish to meet with me? Wherever, sir, I wonder. Uh, well, you are the Duke. Duke. Yes, yes. Um, when can we meet our scientific guests? They are outside, as I speak to you, Premier. They accosted me as I arrived this morning, uh, insisting your audience. <laughs> they are outside? Now? Why did you allow me to dawdle so Henry? Good guests at our door! Well, you are the Premier. I simply wanted you to start the day the most... Your father... I am not my father, Henrik. Call in our guests and make them comfortable. For all they are doing, we owe them at least that. Yes, of course, Duke Premier. I should have guests, would you? Is that what I says? You're still on track to complete the project as planned, Duke Premier. Uh, indeed. We will complete your project as promised. I understand. It is materials, you say. In what regards exactly? Henrik assured me our project was supplied with whatever resources you desired, as well as ample space and lodgings. Is this not correct? Uh, I was sure to provide more than enough towels to our... Our lodgings have been more than sufficient, Duke Premier. 
and we thank you for what we've been given already. <laughs> you and your staff have been incredibly uh, generous to us, Umbo uh, Free, Ublishon, Duke. You are too kind. What is it you desire, then? It is as I said. We need better materials. Uh, not that the ones you have not already provided us with are not plentiful, uh, but they are not of the quality we need. I see. Can this be remedied, Henrik? Well, uh, the region's resource supplier is better judged than I, Drew Premier. Uh, no need. <laughs> <laughs> but he assured me that certain materials he supplied were in fact a first rate. <laughs> Perhaps they were first rate. But that would be before your gentleman supplier stripped them from the back of a Deutsch tank. Uh, if you pardon my God, Street Premier. Is this the truth, Henry? <laughs> the true Premier. The region's resource supplier has long been a dear friend of mine. I still suppose he has, Henrik. I would like you to arrange a meeting with this man for dear friends here. I would say you have the best possible materials for your noble work. Uh, you are too generous, Duke Premier. My colleagues are and I are intensely grateful for kindness and accommodating us in such a grateful fashion. Duke. <laughs> uh, yes, Duke Premier. <laughs> Indeed, uh, most gracious. Enough, enough. It is thanks to you three that are doing the good deed of fulfilling my father's dream. Come, before you so hurriedly return to your work, would you be so kind to join me in a coffee? One cannot work without sustenance after all. Mm. <laughs> you are simply too kind, you Premier. Uh, however, we would not dare intrude on your lonely of rock shots. A nonsense, Bernard! Come! Sit here, my friends. Oh, and Henrik, pour our guests a drink, won't you? Of course, you Oh, I tried to read the day and I haven't even gotten dressed. I just say, you don't mind if I clothe myself, do you? As unstately as that would be. We would not wish to prevent you from doing anything, do Premier. Although, if you are there, there we left. Well, we would only do so to happily. <laughs> Premier, I beg you to remember your station. Oh, enough of all that, Henrik. We can't that position given every little thing, can we? Certainly gotten something, to Premier. <laughs> Museum, Duke Premier? Oh, we may be young, but we are not without history, Bernard. Besides, you three shall be part of it yourselves when your project sees completion. Some exhibit the tale of you three shall make one day. <laughs> With your kind help, Father's dream will be the next chapter for a good lord. While our neighbors cross <laughs> our shoulders like children in a schoolyard, we will rise <laughs> upwards in triumph, broadening Drobnoskin's greatness into the skies beyond. For Drobnoska. Uh, for Drobnoska! Um. Uh, a, a noble toast, Duke Premier. I thank you once again for your hospitality. Uh, if we may need to continue our work. Of 
course you may. Oh. Ah, I will have a steward escort you to the supplier. I am sure he will be able to aid you in your search for better materials. Ask of him what you will, and I will ensure your project is outfitted to your requirements. Thank you once again. My country is in your hands. Fordrop Noska! Fordrop Noska! Is this the right place or is it not? This is where the steward said. This man is ever so sprawling, though. I've never even knew this part existed. Oh, we have been locked in our studies for so long, Collins. Uh, think of it as a uh, holiday, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> How fortuitous. I never uh, really did like holidays. What? 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 I never really liked them. I, when I was a child, I wasn't taken on that many, so. I didn't really grow up. You never went to, to Europe, Europe, did you? Well, no. Well, no, why would I go Britain to... did go to Europe, but that's a different thing, Sir Fran. We won't mention that bit. Well, my. When I was growing up, I, my parents didn't take me, so I didn't see the point of it. We normally took, went to uh, Skegness or, or a Western Supermare or. Guten Tag! Don't stress, he's hardly stressing his Reputable dealers for, for one, not to mention his manners. There was a certain roughness to his collection, I will admit. But nevertheless, we have our metal. Yes, all thanks to a crowbar and a good fortune of having his spitfire land his cabbages some ten years ago. Please, Collins, please this way your, your claim will be a part of our grand project. Why, Collins? What other country can boast a plane capable of flying through space? <laughs> How hilarious of you both! Perhaps we should uh, actually build this rock before trying such bold attempts at humour. Do you know, I think we may actually be able to do it now. This new metal is strong and light enough to build the craft we desire. Perhaps your country really did deserve to win the war after all, Colin. Uh, how kind you say so, Frau. Heavens, we should have earned it. So let's just program that into our countless algorithms as well, then. You're so negative. Far as right. Could you perhaps try and be a bit more... petty pal? Uh, a bit more enthusiastic about the thing? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. I have an astounding disposition. <laughs> It is as you suggested, in order to make the output of these new properties into the new materials into our many, many calculations. You would not say that is all, Bernard. Neither I. For that part, I would say it is. With the vessel finalized, how long this construction would be completed. The buildings, flights. This is not our concern, surely. If only the Duke was burning your sense of logic, Bernard. I would not be so sure, so. Some of his decisions lack certain uh, thought. Such as our project, for example? Come, we cannot let ourselves get distracted so easily. We have a task on our hands, don't we? Be it the final one or not, let us see it to it. Oh, I should write that down. We must work out the new algorithms. Bernard's diary. Come on, Emmys. Come on, Emmys. Collins. Um, yes. Um, we have roughly about uh, two tons of stuff, judging from the size of the plane. Mm, should that be enough? It should be. It's far less than what it's placing, anyway. Ah, excellent, 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 excellent. It's um. Uh, we should make sure it's almost good quality, though. Two tons or two grams. This matter is already corroded to hell. Sit. The supplier's warehouse is not of the best quality. It's possible some of the material may have eroded over the time. Uh, we shall keep it on site for now. 
as it rusts away in that barn of his. Oh, the two of you worry too much. It's not easy. If these planes and cuttings have survived the war, I am sure they made it a decade or two in a shed. Trust me, Amis, these things were made to last. More or less all in the same condition. Then the barn has already done its damage. Back to the drawing board again. Yeah, you know, I was thinking we actually made some progress that time. <laughs> well, at least we have not informed our glorious Duke. That would have. <laughs> For the attention of the Regent Skyward Travel Department. From the office of the most glorious Duke Premier. Salutations, friends! <laughs> I have been informed of your fortunate successes this morning by my Regent Supplier. Well done. I would like to offer you my most sincere congratulations and invite you to a celebratory meal at my table to discuss the impending conclusion to your work. Sign the most glorious Duke Premier Christophe the Younger. I dare not guess, Frau. Has he returned anything else? If only that he wants to suggest forming family! He, he's never asked that before! What, what is it? What's the occasion you don't think that Did we have found your face? I don't! I don't! <laughs> oh! <laughs> That's a long attitude one gets us anywhere. <laughs> Come on, Mead, we have dinner plans, do we not? Yes, the point you're giving is we can fly this country into space! <laughs> space! <laughs> but you want us to tell him, Bernard? Then we cannot build his toy after all. Mm -hmm. Right. <coughs> Collins, there is a way we get out of it, and it is extremely simple. We? will lie to him. Oh, God! We begin with the exciting news that the Regent Skyward's travel department is reported to have taken yet another step towards the completion of their craft after a successful meeting with the Regent's appointed supplier of materials to the department. While it is as of yet unknown how soon we shall see the product of their good work, the Duke Premier Christopher Younger is thought to be extremely pleased with these successes. In other news, the recent spate of food poisoning that has been plaguing the residents of Drobnoska is thought to be finally at an end, thanks to the closing of Franz Howler's House of Ham by the Regent's health officials this morning.
sorry to pull you away from your work, but we're now informed of your success in finding the new metal so soon after our meeting. Why, I had to <laughs> congratulate you in person. <laughs> the Duke was most overjoyed to hear it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It would never be impossible without your denial, of course. I could do. Now, would you join me for lunch? I can't resist grilling you all about the project. Oh, it's a joke. Yes, you permit. That's a sort of Starter is a traditional drop nose condition. Brew and a nush. <laughs> Um, what, what does it, um, what, what does it, um, contain exactly, mm. if you don't mind asking, if it's delightful? Oh, um, I think it is a, a sort of broth, if you will, esteemed <laughs> Exactly what we needed to premiere. Now any problems in wait to be history. Excellent, excellent. Ironing out these little problems is part of the process, is it not, Colin? Uh, uh, sorry. Um yes. Yes, Duke Premier. Um but as often the way in science, we should not be too optimistic. One success of the Although it's more than just a small success. Is it not a Frau? Uh, it is a key victory. Um, a key victory. That is the sort of news I'd like to hear. Is it not, Henrik? Oh, certainly, sir. Wonderful news. Wonderful. <laughs> uh, thank you. It would have to. Just thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we are proud to present you with such favourable news. Not at all. Thank you once again. A toast to your present and future success. A fine idea. To John Nuska. I think we shall have another toast. Do you have to agree? Ah, yes. The prototype. <laughs> Yes, I might not be as schooled as you three in the sciences, but good Henrik here has been keeping me informed of the processes these projects usually follow. Well, that's maybe true, to Premier. Uh, not all uh, projects uh, run in the same route. You understand? Uh, d different goals require different parts, Duke Premier. And yours is a most unique goal to conquer space most unique. Uh, unique. Uh, uh, does this mean you have. Uh, Flutter time! I am afraid not. Oh. I see. Well, my friends, I admit, this is truly fantastic news! It is? Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are so glad you understand, Duke Premier. Not at all. It is thanks to you three. Oh, a toast. If you insist, Duke Premier. Uh. To Drobnaska, success, and the prototype. Uh. <laughs> Small, you bastard! Don't go! Oh, Pat Hendrick. Yeah, yes, Duke Premier. Go and inform the relevant department that the ceremony will be moving forward to the end of this month. Ceremony? It's the end of this month? No, Bernard, you are absolutely right. Henrik, tell them the end. No. 
start of next week. Oh, I can't believe it's so soon already. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the toast. <laughs> I don't mean to uh, be rude to you for me, but I feel like all I've done today is to toast. <laughs> of course, my friend, what else? Do you think that you have already surpassed the prototype stage and have a craft prepared to launch, to launch. on Monday in front of the entire Regency? It would be a crime not to taste your incredible work. Friends and members of the Skyward Travel Department, a toast to space! As the new day dawns on Dromnosca, we remember why we're here. It's not out of duty, it is not out of fear. We come together out of the cosmic on the soil. We work together for the last together in talk. with ambition, aspiring for a greatness that will see him soar far above the birds now below him. This dream will soon become a reality, and Drobnotska shall lead the world once again in its rise beyond the traditional constraints of land, without our most noble Duke Premier. This would still be but a fantasy. It is my utmost pleasure to welcome you here today. Our great country is on the verge of making a great leap. One that will not just affect Drobnuska, but the world as a whole. My father, Duke Christoph I, died dreaming of his young country conquering its narrow borders and ascending triumphantly upwards. We are soon to make that dream reality. <laughs> Dromnoska has taken into its arms a team of skilled and knowledgeable scientists that, while born far from its bosom, have been striving tirelessly to develop a craft capable of achieving flight in space. I have learned much from these brave individuals, and they have also learned from us. While we are born from different creeds, languages, and backgrounds, when unified under one tongue and name, our aspirations are infinite. This is foolish! Why does he work from these English manuals? The unified language makes for a unified team, as the Duke says. Kershaw. How much builds the boy Duke rocket if I cannot understand the books he has given me? Besides, we are working in astronautics, not aeronautics. I do not feel the Duke fully understands our task. We are current our own science task. Frown. I don't think even know, I don't know. 
Ugh. I think that wine's got to me. <laughs> Where was I? Do not get me started. Ben Collins, he can read his books at least. Uh, uh, still asleep, I believe. Asleep? Do not see us sleeping. We have three days to send something from this country into space, and he is sleeping? He is only human, sir. Although, he should be awake by now. It has been four hours. I'm awake! Uh, have we, um, have we made any, um, progress since I've been here? We have completed everything, Collins, and the good Duke is on his way to deliver his commendations. Really? <gasps> no. Oh. <laughs> These books are no good. The Dukes, they, they are the closest applicable field. It's not that, Collins. They are in English. How am I to fully understand them? Aside from the figures, there are certain challenges to our comprehension. And we may speak your language, but I have never worked in it. Um, is, is that more of the Dukes' concern? What do you want me to do? Ask him for the Deutsch and French equivalent of each? It is not over. Sit. You must translate for us. Uh, translate? I don't know what good that'll do, especially on uh, such a little sleep. Uh, Simplify that. Anything. We do not know enough between us to build this ship, especially with this metal we are working with. She is right. I mean, these books are essential. I will try. Christ! The truth! Possible, he's not. Either way, we can not keep him waiting. <clears throat> Please, do come in. A slightly more formal greeting than I was expecting, but still. G'day, y'all. Um, hello? Anna, the name's Anna. Uh, hello, Miss Anna. My name is, uh, Collins, right? James Collins, our little British gentleman. And you must be Bernard Bouchard. Yes. <laughs> it is a pleasure. <laughs> so this must be you, Francisca Luke. I prefer Frau. Frau, right, Frau. My, what a merry bunch you guys are. I'm sorry, Miss Anna, but um, what brings you here on quite a tight time frame, as you've probably heard? Of course, sorry, I uh, tend to get carried away. I'm here on the Duke Premier's business. I am the Regent's appointed publicity officer and Meister of Speeches, or something like that. Without sounding rude, madame, but how exactly does it involve us? Why? Your work is why I'm here. Uh. I need to write a speech for the Duke's launch ceremony, and what better way to get a real glance at the details than to see you guys up close? I can think of a few. It's my job to make up all of the little shindings our Duke likes to say, and trust me, when he wants some good ones for this whole launch thing. I can imagine. However, as you can see, we are dreadfully busy. Well, I'll just steal one of you for a quick interview then. Don't really have time for that. Take some more pictures from my collection and put her up. Well, uh, like I said, we don't really have uh, Excellent. time. Excellent! Just come with me, James, and I will find us a quiet little nook to talk in. We do not have time for this. Please take your writing elsewhere and let us work. Don't be silly, Francisca. This is the juice business. There is always time for it. Unless, of course, you have issue with his intentions. Fine. Take the man. Be gentle with him. He is a delicate soul. Oh, don't go worrying, Bernard. I won't be too harsh on this. Right. Uh, Frau? But uh, Bernard? I, I should try to be quick. It is the desire of the Duke, Collins. If the Duke for better, it does not worse. Be quick. He's your manager. Yes. Hello and welcome. And hello and welcome again. Today you join us on a very special tour around the Regent's own manor house. A rare opportunity to experience the hub from which old Jobnoska runs. Well, yes. 
Welcome indeed. Thank you. As you can hear, we are joined by the Duke Premier's butler himself. Our gratitude for this opportunity, Henry. <laughs> It really is no problem, for today you are our guests. Am I correct in believing this mansion has been in the Duke's family for many years, even predating Drobnoska itself? Yes, that is indeed true. Although now many of its rooms have been kindly donated to various regents' departments for use as offices and the like. In fact, nowadays the Duke Premier only makes use of a handful of rooms for his own purposes. Fascinating! Indeed. And evidence also of the Duke's unending dedication to our country. Very true. Now, Henrik, may we explore these offices a bit further? But of course! Follow me and we'll see what we can find. So, as you can see, Duke Premier, once you have completed your illustrious speech, I shall operate pulley from behind the scenes and... Ah! Calling the screen to raise and the craft to be revealed behind you! <laughs> Uh, of course, uh, we will rehearse this prior to the ceremony, determining that we can get the best possible angle for the beach. <laughs> excellent, Henrik. This is all excellent. Thank uh, you, Premier. To serve the Regency is truly thanks enough. Still, the Regency would barely function without you. My country owes you a great debt. Uh, Too kind, you, Premier. It is so strange to think what in a few short days we will have achieved my father's dream. To nestle Drognoska amongst the stars. It will be a fine day, my duke. To imagine that magnificent craft jetting boldly skywards. Should we play the national Should we play the national anthem at this, uh, as it does so? Note that down, Henrik. All of our country's ambitions carried out to not one metal craft. <sighs> I almost, almost didn't believe what it, we could actually do it here. Do you premiere? Yes, it sounds so silly to doubt it all, but I was possessed by this niggling at the back of my head. I love my country and its people, but I felt that maybe it was a step too far, perhaps. Drobnoska is the greatest country on earth. It's true. And yet space, Henry. Space. My father was a great man. And a greater duke. And yet to let me lead Drobnoska so far afield. I confess. I doubted his judgment. Stupendous! And yet Drobnoska has proven him right. And my fear is so very wrong. Our neighbors sneer. Oh, they sneer, Henrik, calling us little more than a city set. And yet look at us. We may be small, but we have done what they could not. We are to surpass even the skies, Henrik. It's all in your work, my duke. Is it? We must not pretend that our scientists' guests are Drobnoskans by birth. It is because of them that we have come to this point. Drobnoska is not an island, Henrik. <laughs> oh, very good. Well, well yes, Duke Premier, we, we are landlocked. I mean, we are not isolated from the rest of the world. Uh, oh. We must learn from it. Share its knowledge and its languages. That is how we have achieved so much. Unify these differences. And the impossible becomes possible! Uh, oh! Uh, bravo! Bravo! Henry, Henry. Um. Henry it is too soon for applause. We have not achieved space quite yet. My apologies, Duke Premier. I, I simply got caught up in the air of the situation. <laughs> it's all very exciting, isn't it? Yes. Could you fetch the Regent's publicity officer? I would like to talk to her about grand speech. I've had some thoughts, you know. 
I don't doubt it. Um, <laughs> the problem is, true Premier, I'm afraid Miss Anna is currently preoccupied visiting our scientists yet. She wanted to see the boys at work, yes. so to speak. That does sound dreadfully like our American friend. Yes. In that case, let us join her. I would not mind the opportunity of giving the project some inspiring words. Of course, you Premier. Shall I fetch your usual visiting jacket of office? Hmm. It is too grand a dress for such an industrial environment. Fetch me one of those. Science coats, would you? When in Rome, as they say! Science coats? Do they make Science coats they make? When in Rome, they make What do I mean, Caesar? Me, 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 As the new Nazca, we remember why we're here. It is not out of duty, it is not out of fear. We learn them, sweet of musk and soy. We come on, Collins, this will do. Hello there. I'm afraid we'll be coming to I'm sure there's a free room somewhere else, Miss Hannah. Nonsense. Um, this room's as good as any. Uh, this right? Is, well, this is my office, Miss. Um, Anna, how do you know that? But this is your official office. Yes. No offense, buddy, but the sign on the door over there says overflow phone call. Well, no, this is still my office, though. It's the water. Yeah, this is still my office. Well, it is. Are you the orchestra? Yes. For the Regency? The Regency Standing Orchestra. Should you? And I really need to rehearse. <laughs> Might be impressive. Just take a break or something. We are using this room. Alright? Sure, how is one nation supposed to gather under one verse when I don't even have place to rehearse. I, I do feel bad for Sally. She's shut in his room after all. Don't worry about it, James. I'm sure he can find another deck hole to serenade. Shall we get started? Uh, yes, I suppose we shouldn't. Uh, please, Collins, if you would. Have... Whatever you say, Collins. <laughs> so, Collins, you British? Uh, yes, I'm British. I was invited! Invited? Uh, well, 
Yes, I, um, I was invited. Um, I, I received a letter detailing the project and praising my work during the war. <coughs> it, uh, apparently, apparently the Duke's father was an acquaintance with a former colleague of mine, or something like that. <laughs> An international name. He was Stanley Collins. I'm nothing of the sort. <laughs> but you accepted the Duke's offer. Uh, well, well, I'd come acclimatized to uh, traveling for my work during the war, and the pay was generous. And of course, the course was something I felt nobly for, not just for the uh, progression of science, but for the nation of Dromnovska also. Of course, but how did Kate? Catherine. How did Catherine feel about all this? I mean, Europe is a big place, and there are a lot of borders between here and Hawaii. Well, she, she had her reservations at first, but the money was going to help us ever so much. Is all this really relevant? Can we not talk about the actual project instead? You so wish, Collins. Bernard are both um, extremely talented individuals, so I wanted to work with them both. We all differ slightly in our disciplines, but uh, we complement each other, I feel. You're an eclectic team, for sure. You mean? Well, no offence, Collins, but the three of you are like a mix and match of Western Europe. Well, diversity is good, Miss Anna. As uh, the Premier often says, Dromnoske is a home. It helps so you all creeds and languages, I know. I wrote that myself. <coughs> is that not a barrier to your work, though? I mean, English is not everyone's first tongue, as much as the Duke likes to enforce otherwise. But, um, everyone has a... Every project has its hardships, Miss Hannah. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that thing. I am the only one who's going to be listening to it, trust me. Mm. Okay, go play all your my stories, can I? That my future does. Your future? For sure. The world is going to want to know of this whole thing once it's over. Whichever way it goes. Whichever way it goes? I'm just thinking of my future, Collins. This gig won't last forever. Do you remember that? Got to get back to Catherine. Remember? Um, yes. Of, of course. Big one. Big one? Yeah, sure. Do you think you can do it? Well, I, I, um... Actually, hold that thought. I'm just gonna go get a cigarette. Grab some air. We're already smoking here, Miss Anna. I don't mind at all. In this hole, we would probably die of asphyxiation. Don't mind me, I won't be long. Oh, this is not good. There's no fuel intake. That is your problem. You have to find a way to connect this to this. Did the dude not tell you why you needed? He said you would tell us. But that's what I'm doing. We need to find a way to link the engine to the craft. Oh! Good. Do you understand now? No. God, the damned Bernard. Where's Colin? Uh, he's with the American, remember? Of course. And we have 12 hours to build a ship. He's off with an American woman. You, what is your name? Uh, Sven, sir. I, I, I mean Miss... Good, Sven. Let me tell you something about the British. Hello? Bernard, is that you? Ah, Duke Premier. What a pleasant surprise. Ah, uh, please do come in. Come, come. Hello, hello. Sorry for intruding, but you know... Uh, Duke Premier, know, it's an honour to meet you. Not at all. I can't let you lot do all the work without me at least poking my nose in, eh, Frau? 
Is this something specific you wanted, Duke Premier? How astute of you, Frau. I was after the Regent's publicity officer, Miss... Um... Uh, Miss Anna, Duke Premier. Ah, yes, Miss Anna. Have you seen her at all? Only we had Duke. Oh, she's nowhere to be seen. Perhaps we should leave then, my Duke. Leave our fine guests to their work while we look for Miss Anna elsewhere. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> ah, feel free to stay, our maid. We would only be too happy to show the great work we are doing in the name of Jognoska. While we appreciate your hospitality, Amy, it is imperative we find, find the region's Nonsense, Henrik! I can't see why we can't have a quick poke around to see the magic, as it were. You know, I could do with learning more about this science profession. That will make my country great, Bernard. So, where exactly is this space going to go? On the contrary, Andrew, mm. space does not actually go anywhere. Oh. Come, let me show you. Hello again, all of you late owls. We convene on what is very much a special night. For in the morning, we bring in a new age for Jabnoska. Our friends in the Regent Skywards Travel Department are finally ready to send us all into space. And far above all our neighbours. It's exciting stuff to be sure. Try not to go tiring yourself out for that big moment though. So let's all lean back and relax with another fine piece. This one goes out to the Regent Skywards Travel Department and all you noble Jumnoskans they serve. Thank you very much. You hear? Allegheny Moon I need your light To help me find Romance tonight So shine Shine Drobnoska. Drobnoska is tiny. It's really little more than a town with an old manor house serving as its palace. Its biggest draw of manpower is its border offices, as people from neighbouring countries literally have to travel through it on their daily commute. On my first day here, I went for a walk and nearly crossed into a different state for Christ's sake. <laughs> but it's somehow still home to such a collection of insane characters. The Duke, Christoph the Younger, is little more than a boy trying to live up to the ideals set by his crazy father. Thanks to him, the entire country is swept up in this belief that they can truly get a rocket into space. This little village of a country possessed by this devout fervor. It's kind of scary. <laughs> I've even found myself almost thinking they could do it as well, even though it's completely impossible. Like I almost forget that. The scientists are all locked up in the left wing of the manor, three of them from here and there across Europe. I guess they're also subject to the adopted English Christoph forces everyone to use. But how can they expect to work efficiently in that? I don't know. Even trying to order breakfast is a crash course in universal sign language. <laughs> it's got to crash and burn sooner or later. Christoph started planning his illustrious launch ceremony already. To think they may actually do it before two of the world's biggest... Wait, there I go again. Getting lost in it all. <sighs> I still haven't managed to get in to see the Skywards travel department, but they must be some kind of crazy to actually try this for so long. Christoph speaks of them with so many graces, it sounds like they're practically gods. Hell, if they really plant Drivnoska in space like they plan to, they almost must be. I mean, space. Space is just... different. It's not like... Planes where you're still trapped on the planet's gravity, it's like breaking free of everything. You're trying to throw yourself as hard as possible away from planet Earth and to just keep going. It's kind of like throwing a baseball as hard as you possibly could, and for that ball to never stop, for it just to keep flying on and on. Maybe that baseball will never sit in your glove again. Maybe that baseball will never even see a glove again. You can't just plant Drumnowska into space with a rocket. I don't even think Kristoff believes that. What I think Kristoff believes is that the rocket proves he could. His father left him with an impossible task, and deep down he knew that. But somehow, just because of how straight up insane Drobnoska is, he's got there. He's called everyone together to build this tower up to the heavens. 
And as much as people don't play nice, it's almost reached them. It's weird, but I'm I'm not sure if he can't do it anymore. If Dravnoska can't do it anymore. I think... I think I want them to do it. Either way, I guess we'll see.